Podcasts are hot right now. How do I know? Well, you're listening to one right now, aren't you? But you might be wondering, how on earth do I get my voice out there and start my own podcast? It all seems so intimidating. Between hosting and platforms and monetization, it can get real complicated real quick. Well, I'm going to let you in on a little secret. We started this podcast over two years ago, not knowing clue one on how to do it. So how'd we do it? We did it with Anchor. Anchor is the free podcast app with creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. And Anchor will distribute your podcast for you. So it can be heard on all the platforms like Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. And everybody likes money, right? Well, you can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. So go right now, download the free Anchor app, or go to Anchor FM to get started. It's the E-Commerce Minute, your daily dose of e-commerce, tech, and retail news with your host, John Suter, Bart Moraz, and Brittany Blackman. The E-Commerce Minute is a production of Sumo Heavy, a digital commerce consulting firm located in Brooklyn, New York, and Philadelphia. Find us on the web at sumoheavy.com. It's the E-Commerce Minute, episode 768. In today's episode, Grocery Neighbor is your mobile supermarket. Late March saw long lines outside of supermarkets as anxious shoppers waited to stockpile supplies. Four months have passed and the lines remain. Mass shoppers equipped with hand sanitizer line up for socially distanced visits to the store. But social distancing at grocery stores these days means you either get stuck waiting for longer than you plan or trying to secure a spot in supermarkets growing waiting lists for delivery. Enter Canadian startup Grocery Neighbor. The company believes it has come up with a potential solution to the grocery store conundrum, a mobile supermarket in a semi-open air truck that shoppers can step aboard to grab essentials while maintaining social distancing measures. The system seems simple enough. Using an app, users receive notifications when a mobile supermarket is either on their street or a truck can be tracked until it's close enough to access. These trucks could offer anything from fresh meat and fish to produce and local specialty items with a system not that different from an ice cream truck rolling up your street. The 53 foot long trucks are custom built for COVID-19 with sanitizing and social distancing front and center. The trucks will follow specific routes and schedules, just like a bus. The truck will be open at both ends and shoppers will enter from the back and exit through the front like a tunnel. The company wants a maximum of five customers on board at a time, spending five minutes each in the vehicle, which is laid out like a single aisle in a grocery store, offering meats, cheeses, produce, and some dried goods. Each customer will push a trolley that folds out of the wall and that runs along the track down the aisle. It then folds back to the wall to be immediately sanitized once the customer reaches the till. It serves as a built-in social distancing measure. There's a floating grocery cart in front of you and behind you. People can't touch you, even if they want to. Free trucks are set to begin operation in the city of Toronto this summer, but the company has hopes to expand its services to 1,000 trucks operating countrywide in Canada. This could be good even uh, not in COVID times. I'm right. looking at food deserts in urban centers. Oh, um, yeah. The challenge, obviously, is a big 53-foot truck, but let's put that aside. I think this could be a great concept for places that suffer from no grocery store or poor food sources, like shopping at Dollar General for your groceries, which is none uh, of I remember yes. in college, I watched this documentary about like food insecurity and uh, these kinds of deserts. And like, there are some people who have to drive literally like two and a half hours to get like any decent groceries. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, it's it just that's not even just an urban thing. It's it's uh, the rural thing as well. Right. Where and as you said, it's you could be living in this nice rural town, but, you know, all the little stores closed when Walmart moved in and then Walmart moves away and they have nothing. Exactly. <laughs> and they have to get in a car and go two and a half hours to get, get a carton of milk. It's pretty bad. Right. So, yeah. But anyway, for, just let's bring it back into modern times uh, in our COVID reality. This is actually a pretty interesting concept. I mean, I think it's pretty cool. Again, you're looking at the rendering. It's this giant truck sitting on your street. How that fares in most neighborhoods remains to be seen. But beyond the size of this big, gigantic truck, I think it's a great concept. And I think the design is cool where it's like you come in one end, the cart is attached to the side of the wall, and you make your way down, no dilly-dallying, get what you need, and get the hell out. I think it's great. No dilly-dallying. No dillying and or dallying. We will have no dallying. We've seen, we've seen a whole bunch of those mobile kind of things, you know, that people are building. Yeah. Remember one of the first podcasts we did? It was that the mobile store, but it had no driver. It was just this robot yeah, yeah, yeah. truck that just drove around cities. But, you know, that never. I mean, we, we might have that actually that guy on our podcast at some point. Really? Mm -hmm. Which guy is that? 
for the for the mobile one. Oh, okay, awesome. Looking forward to that. Uh, that is our other podcast in the ring, which you should check out, and is available. On all you should the places. definitely check out. You should definitely check that out. <laughs> True. Definitely check that out. So yeah, lots of grocery alternatives, and again, in this COVID area, we're, era, we're getting a lot of obviously uh, online grocery is going skyrocketing, you know, and who has benefited most from this uh, companies like Uber who were like, Oh, our core business is tanked, but now we can deliver groceries. So now we're doing okay. So, I mean, people are making, you know, uh, what's the best, you know, don't let a good opportunity go to waste. People come up with great ideas in a crisis. So great. Honestly, idea. the photo, the rendering is like making me like oddly emotional right now. Like look how at peace this little fall day. Yeah, looks. It's like a little it false. So the rendering is so like this nice, nice street of row homes. And there's like a, two trees and the trees are the, the fall leaves are falling. And this man is casually strolling through this truck. It and looks like so a, crisp. Yeah. Like all the fresh Lord vegetables. Crisp. And there's like nice bread and a little meat section there. Yeah. Such a nice day in October. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just hanging Everyone's out. It's chilling. He's got oh no face God. mask on. <laughs> He's just kind of hanging out. So upset. So this is probably in New Zealand. They don't have any COVID there. So they're probably. Uh, true. <laughs> true. <laughs> Shout out to New Zealand. Yeah, here's to New Zealand. My ex, my ex moved there, and I thought she was crazy. Now she's the smartest person in the world. <laughs> Her mind. Uh, and welcome to being happy at times. That's it. Uh, the times they are changing. All right, we're gonna close this one with a little stunt time. The Canadian retail market is highly consolidated, with five grocery majors commanding nearly sixty-two percent of the retail share of market. Loblaws, Sobeys, Metro Costco, and the ever-popular Walmart. In 2018, food and beverage sales in Canada exceeded $961 billion with a B, representing a 3% increase compared to 2017. Grocery stores represented 75% of sales, were followed by alcoholic beverages at 90%, and specialty food stores at 6%. Those stats are courtesy of the USDA. Got any comments on Grocery Neighbor? Hopefully see a grocery neighbor in your in your neighborhood one of these days because I would like this better than my real neighbors. So Yeah, I was just about to say. <laughs> All right. You guys got anything else? Nope. Nope. All right, that's your e-commerce minute for today. We'll see you on the internet tomorrow. That's it for today's show. If you like the show, do us a favor and subscribe or leave us a review on iTunes. And don't forget, you can now listen to the e-commerce minute on your Amazon device. Just add e-commerce minute to your flash briefing. And finally, if you have a comment or suggestion or just want to say hi, find us on social media at Sumo Heavy.